Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to create this super cool 3D room scene in After Effects. I created it using one precom that I duplicated three times and placed it around the 3D space. In this precom, I used text layers to create an interesting wall design for my scene, but you can put anything you want here. By the way, you can download this project file and support my channel. The link is in the descriptions below. With that said, let's start with the tutorial. Alright, so first let's create a full HD composition, set the duration to 10 seconds and the background color to black. Now let's create the wall design. You can create a text layer like I do. You can download the font I'm using for free the link is in the description. Play around with the font size and the leading to get a nice design. Make sure you place it inside the comp boundaries. Now we can duplicate this pre-comp using Ctrl or Command D and change the font style to fit the design. I think it looks great and now let's select this word and change the color to some nice yellow. Let's do the same for this word, which will color in red. Once we finish with the text, let's create a new solid to use as a background. Now let's bring this layer below all the layers and pre-comp all the layers we have created. Let's call it wall, make sure both are selected and hit ok. Awesome, so now we have a pre-comp for the wall. And before converting this layer to a 3D layer, let's move its anchor point down here. You'll understand why we did that in a moment. Hold down the control or command key while doing that. This way, the anchor point will snap to the point. Ok, now let's convert this layer to a 3D layer. Click here if you can't see the 3D function. Next, let's create a new one node camera with a 15mm lens to achieve a dynamic camera angles. Now let's move the wall backward in a 3D space and duplicate it using Ctrl D. And now select the bottom layer and press R to rotate it in the X rotation axis for 19 degrees to use it as a floor. That's why we place the anchor point in the lower part of the layer earlier. Alright, now let's duplicate this precomp, bring it up, press P and place it up here to use it as a ceiling. Great. Now let's adjust the position of the camera and set the Z axis to get a nice angle. Next let's move to second one, create a keyframe with the current value and then navigate to the beginning of the timeline. Here we'll move the camera to the left until the scene is out of view. Finally at second two we'll move the camera to the right until the scene is out of view again. I think it looks great and now let's expand the missing areas of the walls in the scene. For this we can use the motion tile effect. Now let's adjust the output width while checking how that looks at the beginning of the animation. We can set it to 600. Also, now let's copy the effect and paste it onto the ceiling and onto the floor as well. 
now you can play around with the face property of the effect to get a more randomized look. Alright, I think it looks great and now we can create the sphere. First make sure no layer is selected, now long click the rectangle tool and select the ellipse tool. Make it white with no stroke and while holding shift create a small sphere in the scene. Let's set the size of it to 100, change the name and align it to the center of the composition. Now let's go back to the selection tool and convert this layer to a 3D layer. You won't see it now because the camera is placed on the left side, so let's move to second one to see the sphere. Now let's animate it. Press P to see the position property and now to get more control of the layer's position, right click on the position property and select separate dimensions. This way we will control each axis separately. In our case, we will create keyframes only for the X and Z axis. Now let's go to the beginning of the animation and move the layer to the left using the X axis. Hold the shift key while doing that to change the value in big increments. We can place it here. Now let's go to second 2 and move it to the right. Finally, let's go to second one and move the keyframe of the Z axis to the beginning of the animation and adjust the Z axis of the layer at this point in time. Let's bring it a little closer to the camera. Now go to the end of the animation and copy and paste the first keyframe here. Alright, I think it looks great and now we can add a glow effect to the sphere to make it look a bit better. And now let's improve the motion for the scene. To do this, select all the keyframes we have here and press F9 to convert them to Easy Ease keyframe. Now place the time indicator at the end of the animation and hit the N key to bring the workflow area here. And now let's see what we've got. As you can see, there is a small pause in the animation at the first second time code. So let's fix it real quick. First, let's fix the motion for the camera. Select the position property to choose all the keyframes at once and then enter the graph editor. Right click and ensure that you are using the speed graph. Here you'll see that the motion in this part is at zero, causing a pause. To fix this, select the problematic keyframe and double click on them. In the keyframe velocity panel, check the continuous function and then raise the keyframe slightly. This looks much better now. And to improve the motion even more, we can adjust the handles to the sides and it will create a slow motion effect for the camera's movement. I think we can bring the keyframes down a little bit to make the motion slower. Looks great. And now use this technique to improve the animation of the sphere. First select the X axis and go to the graph editor. Then move the handles to the sides and lock the middle keyframe. Bring it up a little bit and see how that looks. I think it looks great and we can keep the motion for the Z axis as it is 
because in my opinion the small offset in the motion between these two axes looks very interesting. Alright, let's finish the tutorial by adding a cool depth of field effect to the scene. To do this, open the camera options and turn it on. Next, set the aperture to 100. Change the view to two views, make sure to select the left view and set it to top. And now go to the second one and here we can see the camera and the sphere. Let's place the focus distance on the sphere's position. Now create a keyframe for the aperture and set it to 40. Now go to the beginning of the animation and change it to 0. Do the same for the end of the animation. Finally, we can easy ease these keyframes and see their final results. And with this, we have finished the tutorial. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I will see you in the next one.